Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and do you guys remember our video in the Avro Vulcan in which I said that there's a certain type of aircraft that I always need to feature on the channel regardless if it is the core audience of it or not. Now the F-14 was one of them and at the time I said that I had no idea that that close to it I would actually have an F-14 over here. Now, welcome to the Heat Blur collaboration with India Fox Echo bringing the F-14 Tomcat to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I'm not a military aviator, but just like in the Vulcan video, where I said that certain types of aircraft are so legendary they just need to be featured, this is absolutely one of them. So, I, I'm not the type of guy to show you how to fire your weapons, but I am the type of guy to show you how much fun you can have in an airplane like this. So, the F-14 Tomcat, here it is. Now this one is straight out of um, the legendary DCS F-14 brought to Maxa Flight Simulator. So the model looks just about superb, loads of additional um, loadouts available for this one as well and just look at the detailing that went straight into things that you don't see regularly like the gear bay over here or having a look into the engine intake down here by the way don't do this when the engine is running just don't all right so that's the kind of detail that we are looking at in the f14 swept wings obviously and a little trick when in simulating those which i'll talk about in a few moments all right, let's try not to um, bump our head into anything. And here is the um, outlet of our engines. Looks just about superb. So the tail hook, which hopefully we aren't going to need today. And then we can move all the way over to the front. We do have some external tanks installed today, but we are going to get rid of them in a moment. And I'll show you all those kind of menus when we actually head into our aircraft. So join me as we jump right into the cockpit. And here it is. Again, beautiful modeling that we've got on here, but you know this already from DCS, so it is nothing exactly new, but again, it is looking just about superb, so let me show you around over here. Or if you are like me and you don't have DCS, but you still love these kind of airplanes, then this is what the cockpit looks like. Again, the textures are not as crisp as, for example, on the Vulcan, but nonetheless, they have all that wear and tear, and they just give the airplane a certain feel to it, and that really comes up straight away. The moment I see that airplane, the moment I see, for example, the uh, ammo indicator over here, I feel straight in a Top Gun. And that is what we're going to do today. Talking of Top Gun... If we click the upper display up here, we've got our jester menu, take a guess where that name came from, and over here a lot of the uh, stuff that the Rio would normally do for us can basically be done for us in here. So for example, if we go to the left over here to aircraft servicing, we can connect an external power, or if we go over to the loadout, over here we can choose if we want to have, for example, our external tanks are connected or over here we can have them removed so that's what it looks like without the external tanks connected and so on so all that kind of lovely stuff okay. also we could connect or we could load up some weapons over here and all that lovely stuff we can do right in the um, okay. jester menu down here now funnily enough if you go to the back and you click um, the front menu or you click the screen over there then you get your Cougar menu, and up here, you can basically fly from the back and have the airplane controlled from the front. Sort of like an autopilot. Alright, so that's just a couple of cool options that you've got available over here. Alright then, let's just move straight back to the front though, and we are going to fly from the uh, front seat, taking our airplane flying, and we'll leave the Rio stuff to the Rio. Alright, cool. So. Another very cool menu that we've got up here is the checklist, and over here you can either have Jester talk you through the startup procedure for land-based or carrier-based, or you can just um, have him do his part while you do yours. So I'll just show you how that stuff works, but then later we're going to cut it short in order to go flying with a little bit of improvised procedures, because otherwise it just takes 15 minutes already, you get the entire thing starting, have the INS aligned, and so on. So 
nonetheless, I just want to show you how these things work. So let's go into it, and we are going to get Jester to talk us through it. Roger. So we're waiting for external power. Okay, so let's get external power connected. Okay. ICS com check. Yep, com check is good. You can see he takes a bit of time there to get everything running, but give him a Alright, that's extended, transition light off. Select LTS on master test switch and verify all light luminaires. So that is all lights illumi illuminating. Select fire DVD DXT on master test selector and verify left and right fire go light illuminate. So that's left and right fire and the go lights. Select INFT on master test selector and verify that engine fuel wing sweep and an alpha instrument are working. So that's wing sweep, AOA, engine instruments and um, fuel. Okay, now it gets fun. Arm um, ejection seat. Alright, that's all checked up here. Make sure emergency storage push light is out. Down here. Make sure light of light is off. Alright, and from here on I'll just interrupt Jester. Alright, hold the procedure. Make sure light of light is off. Alright, and with that, I've just aborted the Jester sequence, and we're going to do stuff ourselves. So, let's go ahead. We'll turn on that anti-collision light down here. We've got the power and we've got the air connected, so everything that comes from now is straight out of Top Gun. Alright, so, start number two. You can see it really takes some time for the RPMs to come up. Okay then. Add fuel. Here you go. Fuel flow is coming. ITT slowly rising. Do note it starts at 600 degrees down there. So we are at like 350, 400 already. So that's going really quick. Alright, and that is our engine number two, more or less running. Just get a little bit more time over here, RPMs coming up, and then we'll do number one in a moment. So that's looking good, starting left. So waiting for RPMs to go over to uh, 20 over there, and they are coming up. Right, that's 20 adding fuel. TIT rising. Okay, and that's the engine starting up down there. Alright then, I'd say that's two good starts, so let's get the menu up once more. Then, servicing menu, external power, remove. 
Okay, cool. So we've got two good starts. The rest of those procedures, I'm just going to improvise a little. Okay then, and that looks about good. I can go down here. That's our displays coming up. Left bleeder working, right bleeder working. Then we can go to both. Okay, that's looking good. Then we do the stick test. Move it all around, like so, and we got the go light. Alright, very good, the portion system is reset, and that looks about good. So, main instruments, and that is about it. So, a couple things as we are about to take the airplane moving. First of all, we got the uh, nose wheel steering engage light down here. That one we control with the switch on the back of the um, flight stick down there. So that's something to keep in mind for you guys. You can obviously assign this to your um, joystick as well, so that you get the um, so that you can control this. It's a good idea to assign that to a joystick anyway, because you use the same button to engage previously on autopilot modes. So, just something to keep in mind. Alright, come, we'll just take 1 to 2.8. That's looking good. And then, just I should do the one in the back, but obviously, we uh, just turned him off, so we just move to the back over here then. We can get just as controls on our sides, and that's what it looks like. So. Can operate them all, but up to you whether you actually want to. For today, I'm more like the front seater, so we'll keep things going over here. Okay, so all of that stuff is looking quite good. So what we can do next is we'll just tune the uh, local check-in so that we've got something for our navigation. So that is going to be we're in RF Valley, in case you didn't notice. And I'm sure you know what that means. And the tack end is 2-1 X-Ray. We go 2-1 X-Ray. And here we got it. Together with our distance indication. Okay, perfect. So with that basically ready to go. I'm sure those of you who know your way around the F-14 are going to scream, No, what are you doing? At the moment. And I do apologize for that, but... As I said on my video featuring the Vulcan, Yeah, just so I know the INS is not aligned. That's fine. As I said in my video featuring the Vulcan, I'm not like the um, military specialist for that. There are others. can very much recommend, for example, CG Aviator, who's doing a superb job on his channel. I'm more like the guy who just enjoys flying those aircraft and enjoys the raw power that those aircraft can develop. And that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Man, just look at those textures as we're moving around. They look simply stunning, do they?
So, something notice over here. Spoilers are out. Not 100% sure as to why they are, though. But we'll stop at the holding point and we'll check over there. Superb control on the nose wheel steering, by the way. It's doing a really awesome job with that. Alright, and then we're about to reach the runway and get in a position. So, holding point runway 13. We'll stop here for a second. Then let's quickly see about those spoilers. So. Speed brake axis doesn't seem to have an influence here, so... Okay, here we go. Aha, so we can control them... ...on the flap axis, on the last point. And if you're now saying, like, on the flap axis, what on earth? Then don't worry about it. That's actually... That, that got some sense to it. I'll explain it in flight. Alright, so. I'd say we're pretty much ready to go. Are we? Don't need any of the floodlights. We'll... Yeah, we can turn on those flashing lights. But apart from that, we're flying military. Don't have to worry about it. So, let's go. So, just like the uh, real plane... Your throttle is by default going to be limited by the maximum military power setting. In order to access the afterburner, you'll need to press a separate dedicated button. And that one you can assign through the toggle afterburner option in your uh, simulator's menu. So that's something you do when you start flying the F-14. Otherwise you are going to be limited by maximum military power. However, don't be fooled, max mil power actually is quite a blast in the F-14. So. And I'll quickly show you what I mean there with the brakes being held down. By the way, nice to see that brake animation. So, this is my physical throttle lever all the way forward now. And as you can see, max mill power is all we're gonna get. If we want more than that, I have assigned a control, oh sorry, a shift F4 command in order to activate my afterburners. Takeoff is possible with or without an afterburner, so we don't need them. We still have plenty of power, but let's be honest here. We're here for the we're here for the speed. So we'll start the roll without the afterburner to show you just how much power it got. And then we'll turn the burners on, and we'll feel that bump as we add to it. Okay, let's give it a go. Your fuel. What's the fuel quantity down here? Seventeen thousand two hundred pounds right now. I can tell you it's going to decrease quickly. Okay, take off. Max mill power. And here's what we got. Now let's give it afterburner. Right, 150, going to rotate that. Thank you, Jester. And flaps going up. Alright, we'll stay below the clouds initially. Look at that acceleration, man. Okay, 400 and accelerating. Let's go out of the burners. So this is max mill power right now. Maintaining about 450, but the wings are still out, so.
Let's just retract them manually here. Oh no. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay, let's pull them back. You can watch the sweep angle increase on the... Um... Alright, looking good. And all of a sudden we're doing 600 knots. So that thing's on auto. Now look at that. No afterburner, 550 knots. Alright. I'm sure you know where we're heading to. In case you don't, Mark Lou. But let's just take a moment to go through a couple of those valleys over here already. Right, quick look at the fuel gauge. It's at 15.8, so we burned the first 2,000 pounds. Might just about have to reduce our throttle setting a little bit in a moment. And we're doing 600 knots, so... Let's save a little bit of fuel. Watch the fuel quantity gauge down here as we pull just a little bit of that um, power up. In terms of maneuverability, it's really a charm to fly, like, let me show you what a full aileron input looks like. Three, two, one, now. And that is at, like, 450 knots right now. Same the other way around. Here we go. Okay then, let's give it max mill power again, and we'll just climb up a little bit higher, maintaining those 400 knots. As you can see, lovely rate of climb there, even without afterburners. Okay. Let's stay below the clouds nonetheless. So we are passing that first lake on the right hand side. There will be a second one on the left and then basically there will be a lake that is just about um, crossing us at a 90 degree angle. And that's our moment to turn to the right and start heading towards Mark Lou. So down here, for now, just enjoying the um, pure speed we can get out of this, but as always, we're gonna have slight eye on our um, fuel usage here, so I'm not going to go too quick here. I do believe 550 knots is more than sufficient, or Mark 0.85 at just about a thousand feet above the ground level. Okay, so the sun is going to be right in our eyes as we enter Mark Loop. That's going to be interesting. But that also means the sun is going to be outside of our eyes by the time we did our first turn. So we are good to go. So that's our lake crossing us in a 90 degree angle over there. That means we're going to make a right and turn onto about 220 heading. And we'll make the turn in 3, 2, 1, now. You can watch the G-meter just next to the fuel flow gauge there. Pulling about 5 Gs at the moment. 2 to 0 heading, looking good. And I might just about have to correct a little bit to the left here since my turn was a little hard. So that point up there, that's where we're going to enter the Mark Loop. Okay, 450 target speed should be good. And then we'll see what's going to happen out of it. Watch the ground. Yes, Jester, I am watching the ground. Thank you very much. All right, looking good. That's our entrance coming up just in the front. Don't confuse it with the fjord over there. That's not where we want to go. Straight ahead. That's our heading. Okay, so we're at roughly 500 knots. 
And that does look good for me. Here we go. Okay, sticking to the right hand side and off we go to the left. Turning over, more power, max mill. That's looking good. So we'll take a tight turn over that one and drop straight down into the valley again. Man, that was tight. That was really tight. Can't wait to see the G-meter once we get out of this. Right then, off to the left. Can we take that turn? Just about. You could feel the plane starting to shake there, showing that we're reaching maximum AOA. Let's have a quick look at the G-meter now that we're going straight, and we'll also turn off the burner, gain a little bit of speed there. So we pulled like seven Gs. Okay. So, 500 knots, 550, 600, just as telling us how much fuel we've got left, okay then, and out of the burners, might be a little fast right now, so this is where we're turning into. Yep, definitely a little fast right now. Okay, we better exit the loop. If we can't make it, go for the safe option. Okay, so, burn us on. Let's see what that baby can do going upstairs. And we're down to 13.5 on the fuel, so it is certainly something to keep an eye on. Lovely angle at which we're getting upstairs. Just want to be sure that we get on top of the clouds over here. And just trading a little bit of airspeed for altitude here. So, 18,000, 19, 20. So, fuel is 13,000 now. Happy with that. Okay, 22,000. We set course back into the direction of our air valley. So let's start gaining a little bit of speed here. So just watch the speed indicator there as we're gaining our speed. 300, 310, 320, 330, 340. 350, still staying clear of the clouds, and let's go, let's get up a little bit higher, look at about flat level 360, that's where the Tomcat can reach its optimum speed, okay, 12,000 is copied, I really like the gesture implementation there, like, I don't even need to look at the gauges. Anything important, he's gonna tell us. Remember in the original Top Gun movie when they stalled the plane and got into a flat spin? And where Goose counted down the altitude? That's basically in order to relieve the pilot so that he can just look outside, focus on uh, flying that airplane. Alright, reaching level 360. Roughly. Let's start accelerating for a bit. Right at the same point, just trim the airplane out. And here we go. Right, looking good. So, Mach point 9. By now we're faster than any commercial airplane. I 
And now I'll look at the gauges as we transition Mark 1. See how the altimeter and the um, vertical speed indicator show us a descent? That's because the shock waves are currently transiting over the static ports. And now it's supersonic. Alright, fuel is at... Thank you, Jester. That was, that was coincidence, I promise. Alright, and we are accelerating. And climb back to level 360. Like so. Okay then. Maintaining 360, let's gain a little bit of speed. We got Mark 1.15. Mark 1.2. I'm afraid we're not going to reach Mark 10, that much I can tell you. One point three, and you'll notice that now we are going to accelerate quite a bit faster than when we passed through Mark One. The reason beyond that is that when you're close to Mark One, you've got shock waves that can form on your airplane and on your wings, and those shock waves are going to provide what's called Mark drag. So once those shock waves are behind the actual wing. We lose a lot of drag, and all of a sudden you can see we're accelerating much easier. Now going Mark 1.7, and 1.8 is around the corner already. Like, here we go, 1.8. I really like it, by the way, that when you go to the outside, it's like completely silent. And only when we enter the cone in which the uh, shockwaves actually travel, we're gonna hear that, that sonic boom and the noise of the plane. Here we are. Outside of that um, cone, inside. Really like that. Okay, then let's go back inside. We're approaching Mark Two. Here it is, Mark Two. Let's accelerate a little bit further. Fuel is down to eight thousand six hundred, so you can see we're really burning through it at this speed. And that's the reason, by the way, why newer aircraft, or why newer fighters like the F-22 or the F-35 can no longer fly like Mark 2.3 or 2.4 as the F-14 can. It's just, you're burning so much fuel, and you're basically not using it in combat situations. Alright, Mark 2.1. Checked. Let's give it a bit more, let's get it Mark 2.2. And here we are, 2.2. Right, can we get 2.4? 360 is basically the optimal altitude to, to reach high mark numbers, so let's see. We got 2.3. All eyes on the indicator. That's mark 2.3 right now. Make sure we're not climbing too much. Let's see if we can make 2.4. Roger, fuel down to 8,000. Remember, we departed with 17 and a bit, so we've burned more than half our fuel already for that short bit of a flight there. Okay. 2.35. 2.36 Come on, I want that 2.37 That's maximum Mach number of the plane Okay then Let's see into how much of an altitude we can trade that Right, 45 degrees pitch And this is what it looks like Now just watch that altimeter turn down there. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that absolutely lovely? 65,000. Higher than any Vulcan can do. 70,000. Okay, let's get the nose down below the horizon again. It's an F-14A, so the engines are a little bit critical to stall. Okay, 83,000. 84. 85. Getting that in, 
that nose slowly down, keeping an eye on the AOA gauge. On the left of our, I'll just call it a glare shield. 89, can we make 90,000? No, 89.6, the highest we got. And now there is no way but going down. By the way, the sim just looks lovely from this altitude, does it? We can even see the curvature of the Earth. Okay, fuel is down to 5.4. Going out of afterburner. Here we are, out of the afterburner. And up here we basically got no margin. We just went up ballistic and we're going down like it as well. Passing 73,000. But still going Mark II, huh? Keep that in mind. Passing 60,000. Right, heading 140 is looking good. And we're back in 36. All right, here we are. So that was sure enough fun. Back in 36,000. Let's just keep our heading right now for a bit. And let's also keep an eye on our speed indicator. So look at that, Mark 1.6 and it's more or less stable. We are not using afterburner right now. This is with max mill power. That's what the throttle looks like. Right, 39,000, let's try and maintain that. Okay, we just started to receive our Takan of RAF Valley again. Let's make a right and turn into that direction. Here we go. All right, so, Mark 1.55, you can see our speed is just very slowly decreasing, but once we're above those um, Mark numbers with a high drag, you can see that even without afterburner, the airplane is very well capable of maintaining supersonic speeds, which is quite cool. I mean, we're still burning through a lot of fuel. Let me just trim a little bit. Here we go, looking good. If you just have a look at the engine gauges down there, you can see fuel flow right now is around about 7,800 pounds per hour. But with that, we are nicely maintaining round about Mark 1.5. The trick is to use the burner to get through those critical um, values of drag. And once you're above it, the airplane is going to super cruise very nicely, as you can see. And that's just what it looks like from the outside. Just appreciate all the silence, but look at that rocket flying over here. It's really, really cool, isn't it? That's just really cool. And remember, we're just back at about 40,000 feet down here. We've been twice as high not so long ago. What's also worth it is to take a look down here at our Takam and just watch those nautical miles down here passing by. 31, 30, 29, really a fast bird. 28, so we're approaching the Takam like really quickly. Okay, let's save a little bit of fuel then. And we are just going to reduce our power slightly. We don't want to stall the engines. And 
Oh, and here we stalled him. Okay, engine start mode on. Engine number two. Give me just that tiny bit of fuel. Come on. Come on, baby, restart. You can do it. Okay, let's reduce speed a bit. Let's just get out of the uh, supersonic range. Okay, we are subsonic. And the engine is coming back. Let's increase thrust a bit. It's still starting. Here we go. Number two is running again. Okay, let's try and let's try the left engine. And this, my friends, is why you never pull the engines back quickly in an F-14A. They're gonna stall straight away. And that is what we have just seen. Okay, passing 20% on engine number one. Let's put on some fuel. And let's see what we can get. Okay, number two is start. Uh, number one is starting. And reducing power on number two in order to get the TIT down. And then we can slowly start our descent. While the other engine is coming back to life. Well, that was unforeseen, but surely a, a lot of fun. Alright then, very cool. Let's spiral ourselves down. Got RAF Valley, 7 miles right below us. Right, and that's both engines alive again. Quick check if number one is actually responding. Yes, it is. All right, cool. So, both engines back alive. Let's take a quick shortcut through those clouds down here. That's looking good. All right, RAF Valley right down below us. We're gonna make a run for a long final over here. Okay, let's keep VFR though. Here we go. Okay, in the downwind, speed is slowly coming down. There is one more thing that I want to try, though. Can we do the Cobra maneuver? So 350 knots should be around about good, I believe. Alright, the wings are coming out. And 
Let's see that. <laughs> no, it's stalling straight away. It's just stalling straight away. So, Top Gun is probably a bit optimistic. Nonetheless, it's a great movie. Okay, let's try that once more with 300 knots. I'll just go stick all back. But you can see it's not giving us anything. Alright, so we'll just stay in idle. Let's get that speed back. So, below 200. Flaps down. Gear down. I'm probably a little bit too high. Yep, I'm definitely a little bit too high. Well, in that case, we'll just lose a little bit of uh, altitude like that. Yep, thank you. So, add a bit of power. Look at that. Nothing a little stall couldn't solve for us. Well, that was the Navy version of landings. Let's try that once more. This time we'll go max mill. No afterburners, as we don't have fuel to uh, spare. But just to show you what it can do. Right, so that's our takeoff profile without any afterburners. Still doing 4,000 feet a minute. Gear up. What's the fuel doing? 4,500. But so we'll stay close to the field, and then it shall be fine. So look at that, even without the burners, we're still getting 4,000 feet out of the plane. Two twenty flaps coming up. Let's just maintain 250 down here. Reduce power a bit. And we'll just make a traffic pattern into a normal landing here. Well, a traffic pattern of 300 knots, we gotta give it that. You don't need eject yet, my friend. Alright, I had to do that one. Let's put it into a pattern now, and that's gonna be the full stop. Loads of fun to fly, and that's exactly what I love those military jets for. I'll certainly never pretend I know anything about military flying, but what I do know is what kind of fun you can have with these kind of aircraft. Alright then. Gear down, flaps down. One thousand. 
Straight on the, straight on the um, threshold. That's what we want to see. Absolutely lovely. So all the military experts among you, now is your time. Put in the comments how many times I would have died during that flight, and tell me how unprofessional my flying is. I tell you honestly, I just totally love how you can uh, put an airplane like that to its test and how to get that to um, do what you want it to do. Right, so, Northwest Steering Engage is illuminated. Let's press that once more, see if we can get the nose wheel to respond this time. I just try to go to the left. No, this time it doesn't do anything. So press that switch again and here we go. Now I've got nose wheel steering. Alright, so let's resume that taxiway here normally without going over all the axes. That's looking better. And here we are again. Alright, so, certainly not the way the F-14 is meant to be flown, but all I can say is it was a big load of fun, and based on that, I can absolutely recommend you to get that F-14. It's really a lovely plane, um, a lot of fun to fly, obviously I have not flown it the correct way, you don't need to tell me, I am fully aware of that. I don't claim to know how to fly that plane, but what I do claim to know is how to have a lot of fun with it, and that it certainly was. Okay, so, now, here is the off position. The F-14 is available on Marketplace and all the usual distributors, and I can totally recommend you to have a look at it. It's a big lot of fun to fly, even if you know nothing about the military aircraft, but if you do want to learn about them, then you've got Jester to run you through a realistic two-person operation in the F-14. Certainly worth checking out, um, even if just for all those um, assisted checklists here, or the automatic real startup procedure, both of them really recommendable. Loads of options on the airplane as well, like you can get your ground power and um, all different kind of weapons loadouts, so certainly worth checking out. All right, that's going to be it today guys i do hope you enjoyed this one and yeah it was a little bit of a different video that was literally just me having fun with an airplane i got no clue about but it was certainly a lot of fun that i had the f-14 looks superb i can't compare it to the flight model in dcs as i have never used it in dcs but what i can tell you is that it was a lot of fun to fly how realistic that uh, flight model was i can't really say since i've never flown a fast jet but what I can say is that it is, again, a lot of fun. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. That's going to be it for today. I do hope you liked it. If you did, then do go and check out the Heat Blur and India Fox Echo F-14 Tomcat. It's got a lot of cool features modeled, like the engine stalls, as we have experienced when you're pulling the power off aggressively at higher altitudes and higher airspeeds. And the last thing that I just quickly want to talk about, I promised you to do it in the air, but I didn't. 
And that is how the swept wings work in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Basically, Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't support any swept wings. However, they are one of the main characteristics of the F-14. So the way they modeled this is they went ahead and basically implemented the swept wings as kind of flaps in order to create a realistic lift and drag profile for the different settings that your swept wing does have. And for that reason, you're operating them through the flap lever as well. And that way you get sort of the best possible response you can get for a swept wing airplane within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, how realistic that is, I'll leave it up to those guys who got experience with DCS to comment on, or if there is any former or maybe even current F-14 pilot out there in the audience, that would be absolutely lovely to uh, hear what you think how realistic the um, F-14 operates in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Certainly they pushed the envelope of what the sim can do, and certainly we got some nice results of that as well. I do really appreciate flying this one. That's gonna be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, be sure to leave a like in YouTube as well, as it does help with the algorithms. And be sure to leave a comment to let me know what you think of uh, the F-14 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and then I see you all again on the next one. In the meantime, have a lot of fun flying this. If you know how to fly it correctly and professionally, then be sure to let me know in the comments below and I look forward to see you all again on the next one.